Um, anarchist collective, what worries you? Well, I think the, the couple of worries for me was that, although I did, did think it was a great paper in it and it did add, add to the debate, uh, I was slightly worried that it didn't pick up on the latest stuff that's come out of the Cabinet Office on the channel shift uh, and that it hopefully has addressed some of these issues that, that you've raised, yeah? Because that's quite an important piece, I think, for public service. Um, and also, as I said, obviously, my clarification point around, you know, the role of local government and where that fits into this particular programme, but obviously the paper wasn't particularly looking at that, and there's perhaps more work that needs to be done on that around public service. I think the other thing for me was uh, the, the, the constant references in, in everything I read, and I even use it in my own presentations, is around the, the road tax renewal as being such a, you know, a, an exemplar of a case, but you know, that was a £38 million programme, and that we need to emphasise if we want to see the the, those other transactions, and that's the sort of level of investment that we also need to be seen put into it. Um, and the not many are, are actually very underfunded, even though I do agree absolutely about the cost of websites, which is ridiculous. Yeah. Um, and, I, and then just another concern was just a little bit around, um, you know, picking on the concept, the power for, for digital era governance could make much more around, we were talking about back again, because I use this a lot, the whole sort of, you know, the, the social contract capability, the Rousseau model. This is a fantastic opportunity that the internet does bring in whatever device or whatever connectivity the internet brings. It does allow for that genuine democratic engagement and, uh, and taking that to the next level. And, and maybe we could, could look to a bit more in within that. Uh, sorry, that was just a few of my points. So probably missed it. talked a bit about the lack of investment and the, the fact that to do some radical things there actually needed to be some investment otherwise it would get done on old models that wouldn't be, that wouldn't be helpful which is part of what's driven some of the big, uh, big contracts historically. Um, I think in terms of small projects and small contracts the challenge of... Uh, well, so I mean, on that need for investment you're saying they should start to set, try to save money but they shouldn't try and do it now? No, 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 not so much that but that there are some things that need to be done that will require some investment. You know, so uh, an example is the uh, yeah, getting rid of the number, huge number of data centres that there are today and making it a small number of data centres. <laughs> and the simplistic view is that we'll get the suppliers to pay for it, which would be kind of fine and you could do, but it's going to result in some huge contracts that may create some bad, bad things. Um, <clears throat> I think the, uh, the co-creation and co-production and so on is all really good stuff and really positive about it. One of the challenges around it is a, a sense that people could get a bit of a retreat of government from a whole load of areas and just saying, oh, well, here it is, all it is, you, you citizens do it all yourself. So making sure that um, related to that and related also to kind of putting everything online, how do we make sure that people don't just feel that government's running away from doing the things that, uh, that it should be doing, um, and particularly taking responsibility for specifying things and, and finding ways to make them work rather than just giving it over, particularly again on the, on the co-creation stuff. <coughs> um, and I think also the, the need to get, um, to drive the transparency through, they're not just transparency in terms of publishing government data, but also publishing data on government projects, for example, and how they're going, for example, in, in the US where they have a government IT dashboard that gives all the details of the project that's uh, going on and any issues and, and constant ones. So seeing transparency as well as an asset rather than as always a liability, is that a kind of direction you're heading? Yeah. yeah. Okay. We also mentioned about um, the educate need for public um, civil servants and training, education and the structure yes. around that and how that, because that actually affects procurement, it affects the understanding of small projects, large projects. <coughs> Charlotte's group. Uh, two points. First, we, um, of course, signed up to the idea of digital era governance, but we think that there should be greater emphasis on it coming from a citizen um, and citizens' use of public service perspective rather than a government one. And secondly, um, while we acknowledge that some um, online services are working, the DVLA, for example,
example, um, is particularly prominent. They t they're restricted usually to repeat but occasional um, uh, transactions. And um, you need a more seamless backup for when e-services, which, yes, yeah, should move towards the norm, but uh, you need a backup when they don't work for whatever reason. So they, you have a particular um, exceptional case or something else goes wrong and you need to speak to somebody on the phone or you need to do some other kind of mechanism. Yeah, that's an interesting point about Amazon not having a phone number and it's like, oh, how do you sell prompts? And then I thought, well, actually, all the times I've been using Amazon, I've never needed to think of like how I get like, everything works. Um, <laughs> Chanty, your team. All oh, right, yeah. Um, team now. So, uh, do any of these ideas raise concerns? Yeah, the intermediary strategy, there was one 10 years ago, why didn't it happen? Um, there's no intelligent client left, that concerns us. There's no risk analysis, which concerns us. Uh, the idea that um, because of a perception of the need to be sort of equal, uh, uh, that government is frightened of innovation, concerns us. It certainly won't pay for innovation. Uh, NHS choices costing 85 million quid concerns us a great deal, when the best part of it was already available for patient opinion, which government already put 700,000 pounds of public money into. What concerns us even more is that I don't think NHS choices is the most expensive government website. I think direct gov about 200 million by now, and that's pointless as well. Um, so, uh, where are the APIs? Is that, is that a fair point, Alan? Yeah. Um, but, but suddenly we could Google what's the most expensive. What concerns us? Oh, yeah. Um, it's the smallest good idea might alarm Accenture and IBM, and they might withdraw their sponsorship of lunch, and we're getting really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> only kidding, only kidding. What we thought was that the smallest good idea might... Um, it, but it's important to kind of retain freedom for innovation within a large outsourced contract. You know, and, and so for the client to retain the ability to do change control without being penalised financially. And I think uh, that the large successful clients can live with that perfectly well. Bid costs, obviously. We felt um, there's a problem about policy-led or kind of, you know, sort of um, uh, asserted policies leading to IT projects that fail socially. So not a procurement failure or a management failure, but the fact that there's an underlying wrong intention built in from the fact that no one's ever really built these things from the ground up or, or, or designed them properly to work using co-creation. I think that's everything that causes us concern. Brilliant.